everyone, John with A&J Outdoors, and as you can tell, we're not on the boat. We're not even on the water anywhere near the water. We're at home on the patio. Uh, but this one is fish related. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do some smoke fish, right? I'm gonna show you guys how I do smoke fish. So first thing you need, well, of course you need some fish. Uh, me and Joel went fishing a few weeks ago down at Choke Canyon, caught a, several different types of fish. I'll put a link to that video over here or wherever it pops up. Uh, it was actually two days, so there'll be two videos. Um, but one of the fish he caught was a Gasper Goo. I know a lot of people right now is a, a gas a what? It's a common name down here for a freshwater drum. Okay, so he caught a freshwater drum, also known as Gasper Goo down here. And then for my friends up there in Michigan and uh, up in the north, you guys like to call them sheep's head, which all of us are like, what? A sheep head is a saltwater fish that we catch out on the Gulf. So anyways, whatever you want to call it, Gasper Goo, freshwater drum, or sheep's head, that's what he got. We got a small one, so I got two decent fillets. Um, and I'm gonna go through that process. Now up north, my family up there thinks they're trash fish. You catch them while you're walleye fishing, you throw them back. Um, but I made them keep one. And then I filleted it up, cut it up, and used my Uncle Leonard's uh, smoker up there and smoked it. And then they all came over and we had other fish too. Of course, we had walleye and perch. But uh, they devoured that smoked fish without knowing what it was. And then I explained to them it was that nasty trash fish that they all throw back, sheep's head freshwater drum. So they're really good fish to smoke. Turned out uh, terrific. So that's what we're going to do today. So one of the first things we have to do is brine the fish, right? So we're going to have a combination of water and salt. You know, that's the basic ingredients for our brine. And then we're going to add brown sugar. We're going to do an equal parts of brown sugar and salt. So about three quarters of a cup of each with enough water so that you can get a nice solution, right? And then the fish go in that solution covered, refrigerate for a couple hours. Um, there's people, big thick pieces of fish and, and heavy fish, you're gonna marinate maybe overnight, but something like this, thin little fillets, hours probably all you need, but we might go two hours. Uh, then it's gonna go on the smoker. Now usually uh, the classic wood for smoking fish is alder and uh, checking my stock of uh, wood chips and I don't have any alder. So we're gonna do some simple smoke with uh, apple and pecan. You don't need hickory, mesquite, or something like that on fish because fish absorb those smokes readily and you'll just overdo it, right? And you, you won't get a very good taste in my opinion. So stick to those simple woods, fruit woods, you know, cherry, any of those are going to do fine. But uh, alder is, you know, historically the one of choice. So first thing we got to do is we got to get this stuff all mixed up. So we're going to throw in our cup of, this was sea salt, right? granulated, you don't want the coarse ground because you're never gonna break that stuff down. And then we're gonna throw in our brown sugar. All right, get our whisk ready. And this is about oh, three cups of water, four cups of water actually. I'm gonna add some, then we're gonna work on it a little bit. And what you need to do, you need to dissolve this as much as possible, all right? That's definitely not enough water yet. It's very thick. Right, but it's a start to break up the brown sugar. You know how brown sugar get some clumps in it and you want to break that up and get this to a good slurry and then it's easier to mix it up with more water when we add more water. Mr. Elway right here under my arm is very interested in what I'm doing. He loves all things food. So he would love to have some of this smoked fish. So the last time I smoked fish here, uh, you know, cardinal sin, I bought some fish because we don't have salmon down here in Texas. There's no place I can go fishing for salmon, but I wanted to smoke some salmon. So I bought some salmon, smoked it, similar to what we're gonna do here. And uh, man, that turned out great. Now we're doing a hot smoke, okay? So a hot smoke, anything over 90 degrees. Cold smoking is usually for several days. And it's about 80 to 90 degrees. This, we're gonna try to hit around 100 to 125 degrees, okay? And uh, it's hard to do that in a lot of smokers. You know, if you're smoking brisket and all that, you're used to, you know, 220 to 250 range, uh, pork shoulders, all that, but fish, this stuff is a little bit more delicate. You wanna cook it for, smoke it for a longer period of time without overdoing it, okay? All right, so we got a good mix there. The fillets to prepare them, okay, we scaled the fish. So you see the skins on it. So we, we scaled it, filleted it out, 
uh, leaving the skin on, took all the bones out, right? And then uh, I just patted it real dry, rinsed it off and patted it dry with uh, paper towels, okay? So it needs to go in and it needs to be under the water. Yep, that's gonna be perfect. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put flesh side down. Same thing on the other one. So these guys do have regular, you know, you gotta get the ribs out, but they also got those pin bones that run along the back. So a lot of folks, especially on bigger fish, they'll leave, they'll leave the fillet just like it is. Leave all the bones in, leave the skin on, smoke it. Because once you smoke it, it, first of all, it comes off that skin real easy and those bones pull out real easy. But a small fish like this with real small pin bones, it's just much easier for me to go ahead and just remove them before we put them in here. So again, next step, close this up, take it in, put it in the fridge for about two hours. We'll be getting the smoker ready to go. We'll go over that process too. So the next time you see me, we're going to be at the smoker. Peace out. All right, so we're getting ready to get this uh, fish on the smoker finally. So it sat in the refrigerator in that brine for about two hours. No, actually about an hour and a half. Uh, took it out, rinsed it off real good, patted it dry. And then you try to keep the fish in the open somewhere where it's kind of cool, dark, and there's air movement. Because you're trying to... Uh, develop what's called a pellicle on the fish. So it's a, it'll look kind of translucent or kind of shiny coat on it. And what that does is it helps keep, keep some of the natural um, fluids or liquids in the fish, okay? Um, you really probably should have it out in a good place like that. Use a fan or something for a couple hours. Um, this is really thin fish and it's, South Texas, it's only like 68 out, but it's muggy as heck. There's no good place, at, not a breeze out here. So I had it in the house, kitchen counter under the exhaust fan and let some air movement. And it started to develop already. So what we'll do is the first hour in the smoker, there'll be no smoke. We'll just have some heat, try to keep it 100 degrees or lower, you know, between 90 and 100 if we can. I might have to crack the door. And about an hour, and that's gonna help, there's Elway sneaking out, that's gonna help it develop that, that coating on it that we need, okay? Then after that first hour, we'll go ahead and hit it with the smoke. And then um, it's probably gonna go about two hours with smoke. It's really thin, right? If we had nice big half inch thick pieces of whatever, lake trout or whatever, then yeah, we might go four or even six hours, okay? Um, but with these real thin pieces, we're gonna try to hit about 100 to 110 degrees, um, probably only an hour or two. And it also depends on how you like your smoked fish. Some people like it with a lot of moisture still in it. Some people like it with hardly any moisture in it. So just depends on how you like it. So let's go ahead and get the fish back out here, get over to that smoker, take a quick look at it, and get this fish going. All right, see you in a minute. All right, so here's the fish. Hopefully you can see that shine on it. All right, that little glistening, that's that coating we want it to develop, okay? So that's gonna go on the smoker. We're gonna turn the smoker on. Again, we're not using no smoke at first. Hit the power on. Okay, timer, it always gives us a timer. We'll go ahead and give it that first hour. So it's heating up now. So you can't see my face, but that's all right. And always kind of in the way. Um, but this is the smoker. It's a master built and it's a standalone smoker. Okay. Then on the side, and I'll show you in a minute, we've got a box that's in addition to it that houses this that holds chips. So the regular smoker, you can get maybe an hour with the wood chips that are in it, maybe less. And you have to just keep adding wood chips to it. With this side box, you don't have to do that. The other benefit to the side box is this smoker doesn't have to be turned on. Like right now I turned it on to get to 100 degrees, but it doesn't have to be to smoke. That burns the wood chips over there. So that provides the smoke so you can smoke at a low temperature. Cause like I said earlier, you want to smoke fish at a much lower temperature than if you're smoking, um, a brisket or ribs or whatever else. We're looking at trying to get around 100 degrees where with that kind of stuff, you're looking, you know, 220 or so. So most of those type of smokers can't get such a low temperature as this can. So let's go ahead and put this bad boy in. Matter of fact, let's get a closer look with the other camera real quick. All right, so with this camera, you can see, so there's the smoker, okay? There's a smoke box I was talking about, okay? And it's got its own burner down in there. So that'll be heating and burning. And then this little guy drops right down inside there. Oh, 
just like that. It's ready to go. And again, that gives you a lot more hours of smoke time than the other way. You have to keep adding. This way you don't have to keep adding. Let's take a look inside. Another thing when I'm doing fish, I don't, because we want to keep, it has enough moisture in it. I don't put any water down there in that pan, all right? A lot of other things, ribs, sausage, all those, you put some water in there, keep some moisture in, because you don't want to dry them out. But with fish, I don't worry about that, okay? So let's go ahead and stick that fish in there. It's on a sheet that we already had sprayed, so it's non-stick on it. And there it goes. The next time we check it, it'll be about an hour from now. And that'll be to see if it's got that coating on it well enough. And then, boom, we'll hit it with the, with the smoke. All right, folks. Peace out. All right, so this is our hour check on after we started the smoke. So you take a look at her. See, the smoke's coming out pretty good. <clears throat> I wish you guys could smell that. So after that first, so now it's been a total of two hours because we went an hour with no smoke just to get the the coating on her. And so now we got an hour with smoke, probably be another hour of cooking. We're slowly bringing that temperature up now. It's about 120 something. Cooking, we're between 125 and 150 now for the rest of the time. Um, but let's go ahead and sneak a little peek. Latch open. I'll do this real quick so we don't lose too much smoke. Oh my goodness. You can see the edges starting to turn that reddish color. So it's getting there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That. That was smoky. So smells great. Again, about another hour. So probably the next check, you guys will see me putting some of that in my mouth and enjoying it. All right. Next check. Oh, hey, um, yeah, I think, well, I think it's done. Nice two little pieces of jerky, basically, and pretty good. As you can see from this piece that I've already completely devoured, it's not bad. Where's it going? <laughs> you know it's good. If Elliot eats it, because, you know, just look at him, you can tell he's underweight and malnourished and doesn't eat much, but. Okay, so that piece is done. This piece might make it into the office tomorrow, because I got some co-workers that like smoked fish. Um, it might not. We'll see. So, it went about... Total of five and a half hours, right? The first hour was that non-smoke, get the coating made. And then four hours of smoke, four and a half actually. Kept testing it and that's why there's, you know, I was taking little pieces at a time each time I test it. And um, yeah, turned out really good. So if you want, keep one of those uh, Gasper Goose, right? Or Sheep's Head or Freshwater Drum, whatever you call them keep them put them on the smoker and eat them and i'll say this though i smoke this one and it's delicious that way these guys actually are not bad any way you cook them you can fry them you can cook them on a grill and some foil with some butter and some spices and they're a good fish to eat uh are they walleye or crappie yeah maybe not they're just as good if not better than white bass so yeah, they're good fish to eat, so don't be afraid to keep one of these bad boys and cook it up however you like to cook it up and eat it. All right, folks, that's the end of this video. Till the next one. Peace out.